We'll call the October 18th, uh, 2021 regular board meeting to order. Vince, any additions or changes to the agenda? I'd like to add the uh, four October minutes of meeting that we brought in, that we got in. Okay. And just to note that uh, during the, the police vehicle outfit, the chief had requested a few minutes just to give, a, give an update on the department. Okay. Then we have to, we probably need to remove the May 27th. Minutes. Yeah, yep, we don't have the right quorum for the May 27th minutes, so we'll have to remove those again. Mm -hmm. Our target. Yeah. Sure. Uh, any public comment? Okay. Hearing none, uh, military pay decision. Okay, that one was um, brought up at the last meeting. Um, we have an individual that's going on military duty. We had a discussion about that and it, during the round table. Mm -hmm. so it was asked to be put on this for a decision, and it, I think one of the recommendations at the time was to uh, subsidize the difference in pay and make that part of the, the town policy. If there was, right, you were going to find out. It, it's it's not in there, so I'd have to I, I can revise the personnel policy to reflect whatever decision is made to. But there was not one in there. Right. Yeah. But you know. confirmed with the officer that there is a pay difference. I, I have not confirmed with him that there is a pay difference. What he's saying is to amend the town policy to okay. just show yeah. that if there is a pay difference, it will. Okay. Which I think we were, everybody was in agreement with mm -hmm. the last meeting for sure. I can, I'll, I will, I'll work with Diane and we'll get that confirmed. Things that I'll confirm the pay difference, yes. and I'll draft I'll draft verbiage for the revision to the uh, personnel policy. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. They are two separate things. I, I realize. I, I was just curious because we had had the discussion on. Yeah. Because the officer hadn't asked, right? It was more of a where they stand on the issue. Correct. Right. Uh, curb cut permit, Chase Road. Yeah, this is the one for Chase Road. I think uh, Tim actually went up and met with him and took a look at it as well. Anything you want to add, Tim? Um, what, what they're going to do is good. No concerns? No. Move approval of the permit. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Good Samaritan Haven letter of approval. This uh, this was a letter that was asked to draft. I'm just looking for your approval to send to the Good Samaritan uh, to formalize the agreement uh, that they're willing to pay, even though they're exempt, that they're willing to pay uh, their full amount of town taxes. I thought one of the things that was important to, to put on the uh, talk to these guys about or have them sign was they've said through the permitting process they've said through the process as they've communicated with the town that they would always be a good partner mm -hmm. and that they would pay 100 percent of the property taxes due you know on that property mm -hmm. uh, ongoing but without some sort of signed documentation i feel like that you know that could always be rescinded Makes um, sense. so i asked vince to draft this letter mm -hmm. um, make sure you guys were okay with it and then we'll fire it off to them, have them, have them follow through with what they said they would. I'm fine with it. I remember asking the question and they confirmed that they would and, you know, I'm in agreement and I would make the motion to approve the agreement uh, made and entered into four lines of discussion agreement made back on May 27, 2021 with Good Samaritan Haven as presented to them. Any discussion? <coughs> Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, this is the SARD letter of support approval. Yep. Uh, Mr. Lassard is here tonight as well. Um, this is uh, the select board. Uh, obviously, uh, she's looking for approval from the select board or support from the select board with her issue that we have down near the junction road with the Montpelier sewage treatment plant. I bet you can guess what the issue gets. <laughs> <laughs> That's reasonable. Yeah. No issues with it. No issues with it either. 
we need to take a formal action? I do. Uh, 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 you I'll do, do, but I, this I is just. Yeah, I need a, no, I need approval to send it. Yeah. Just to send it. Okay. Sure. Yeah. Move approval. I just Seven. see one change, one minor change uh -oh. in the second paragraph. Okay. In review of just changing the word. Other than that, what's fine? Review of? Uh -huh. So, John, move to approve it. Move approval to the uh, agency of natural resources with the amendment that Paul asked for. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Carries. Aromat Essentials discussion with the board. Mm. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Dr. Sersik is here, I think, to speak on behalf of Arrow. Aromat? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's no. me. Yeah, hi. Uh, my, uh, my name is Lauren Andrews. I'm a registered nurse and a clinical aromatherapist and have advanced training in cannabis science and medicine. And I have a business that I've been running for about six years now called Aromed Essentials. Uh, I have a retail store in Montpelier. And I did have a retail store at the mall for a while here in Berlin. Um, and I'm here basically to introduce myself and to also let you know what plans I have in the future around um, opening a recreational cannabis store here in Berlin. Um, I'm looking at getting into a legal uh, arrangement with uh, Pat Malone. Um, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Cherry Hill Plaza, where Miracle Ear is, and those spots have been empty, and every time I drive by, I wonder why. Um, I'd like to remedy that, um, and I've been in conversation with uh, Mr. Malone to enter a legal agreement to upgrade part of the space and put a recreational cannabis store there. Um, I have been selling cannabis in the form of CBD for several years now. Um, I was one of the first retailers in the state to sell it, and I've done a lot of education and supported a lot of people's quest for better health uh, using cannabis. And from what I know, just for the town, everything seems to be fine with that location. There's, uh, we don't know for sure. We've got the Vermont Cannabis Council who, um, they're still forming what the rules and regulations are gonna be for, for retailers and growers and producers. So it's kind of a guessing game at this point, but looking at what other states are doing and anticipating what they're going to be doing, um, this particular location really fits the bill because there's tons of parking. Um, it's not near any schools. It's not a place where young people would congregate. Um, and it's certainly a convenient location. I'm shopping on the very Montpelier Road all the time. So, um, and it's a place that many of these uh, recreational cannabis stores are very much geared toward tourists. For me, it's going to be a little different. I'm gonna be much more geared toward supporting locals and the community around their health needs and doing a lot of education um, along with just plain old, you know, recreational sales. Um, the reason I'm up here talking to you is to, before I take the plunge and actually enter into a contract, I just wanna make sure that your questions are answered or if there are things that I, maybe I'm not thinking about that you might want to bring to my attention as I move forward with this. Um, does, in, does anybody have any questions for me? No? I do actually. Yeah. Have they, can anyone, I thought I was under the impression that the medicinal dispensaries were getting first priority? Well, they're starting earlier, yeah. That's a good question. Um, I wouldn't be able to open up my place until October 2022. 2022 is when it all comes, becomes legal. But the current dispensaries that are already open, the medical dispensaries, do get a head start. There's a tremendous amount of controversy around that, yeah. but that ship has sailed. Um, they get to open in May for recreational cannabis sales. And that's when growers can start growing too. But it's not the for people like myself, um, not till October, and we anticipate there'll probably be 20 to 25 um, legal rec stores opening probably in 2022. I, I mean, a question I would have for you folks too is, I've gone into communities where it's done right, and I've gone into communities where, in my humble opinion, it's done wrong. Um, I remember a trip to Denver, Colorado. There was pot shops everywhere. It, it, it was too much. And whereas I've gone to like Portland, Oregon, where they're in different neighborhoods and they're, you know, just, it's not overdone. Um, I'm certainly hoping that that's the case with Vermont too, that we don't uh, overdo it because that wouldn't be good for anybody. Um, so I don't, I didn't know if the town, if you have any uh, limits on the number of recreational cannabis shops that you're going to allow into to Berlin, um, if you're gonna cap it at one, 
too. I'd love you to cap it, of course, because <laughs> I like competition. That's fine. But, you know, I, I think it can be overdone. I'm, I'm not sure at this point the board's discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's what I was thinking yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. It might be worth a discussion. because yeah, I think sometimes I've actually banned. Have, is that true? Sometimes I've banned. I think towns have the option, don't they, of not they allowing? Yeah. yeah. But, but Berlin voters have spoken. Yeah. No, I, I, I wasn't suggesting No, 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 I know, I know. But, I know, yeah. but the, no, Berlin, they get it. Um, you know, Montpelier said yes. Barry yeah. said yes. So, um, and, you know, people are questioning why I'm not doing Montpelier. I just don't think that they're going to meet, my, my place on State Street would ever meet the criteria. Um, there's just not enough parking and there are security concerns. I mean, I could go on and on. Yeah. So, but I... I have like I said, affinity for Berlin. I live right in Berrytown. I'm, it's yeah, it's idea. familiar. Is there a distance requirement from schools? I don't know for sure. I know in other places there's a mile. Because uh, there there is a school that just opened up on Vine Street. Uh, Websterville Baptist moved into the old Central Vermont oh, did Academy. They? See, that's good for me to know. Yeah, I didn't know that. But I really but a burger shop opened up in conjunction with the. Yeah. Cannabis sales would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking a donut shop. A donut, fun, oh. but you know, but that's a, that's a, that's. Thank you for that. I'll look, I'll look into that. <laughs> How many people do you plan to employ? That's a good question. Um, Ten to twelve, I would say. I want to have really extensive hours, um, and I'm probably going to be doing production. I already have a successful CBD line, um, so I already have. And I, I want to move my production into this space and do a, a, a kitchen, you know, have a kitchen space that I can use and potentially rent out to other um, cannabis product producers. But that's the kitchens, the retail space is the primary goal. The kitchen, we'll see. Yeah. Any other questions? Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you very much. Affordable housing presentation. Sure, I'm going to talk about something a little bit different than recreational <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> so my name is Justin Sersik, and I'm an AmeriCorps VISTA who's currently serving at the Vermont Affordable Housing Coalition. Um, founded in 1985, our coalition is a statewide network of various nonprofit organizations that strive to unite people in a movement for safe, accessible quality and perpetually affordable housing. And tonight, I'm going to come to talk to you a little bit about some of the important work that we're doing to address the housing crisis presently. So while the crisis has been in motion for a long time, it's become more visible thanks in part to COVID-19. Um, in Vermont specifically, the housing market has become incre incredibly tight, as most of you probably all know, um, as the housing stock has reached virtual stagnation. Um, so because of this, according to the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, this has caused 36% of Vermonters to be categorized as cost burden by housing cost and utilities, meaning that they pay 30% or more of their monthly income just for housing cost. Um, and that is, of course, if they can find housing to begin with. Um, in Washington County, the housing stock growth rate has declined to negative 0.25%, and the vacancy rate among rental units has become the second smallest in the state at only 2.5% compared to Chittenden County's 1.9%. So overall, the crisis has grown exponentially, but this means for the first time, um, moderate income Vermonters have been folded into the mix, and this has truly touched all Vermonters. Um, however, now is the time to speak up and act, especially when there's $1.35 billion in American Rescue Plan money that the state house is deciding what to do with. Um, so as January comes around, um, it's important that we make sure constituents um, inform the legislators about their needs and concerns as they face the housing crisis head on on a day to day basis. So this is why our coalition has been working to revamp our outreach and engagement with a program called Hashtag Housed 802, um, named with the idea that all in the 802 um, deserve safe, decent and affordable housing. And this initiative, um, we've set this initiative on the belief that we should engage all different types of groups of people and individuals in the community at the intersection of affordable housing since it's an issue that affects everyone. So we started last week with our first community meeting in Montpelier at Trinity Methodist Church. Um, and we intend to host monthly meetings with low to moderate income Washington County residents in order to apprise them of our work, what we're doing at the State House, and so that we can effectively advocate together once the session starts in Montpelier. So we can develop affordable housing, secure financial assistance, and um, increase supportive services for folks. Um, 
as we kind of expected, this first meeting had a lower turnout um, than we had wanted, but we are definitely talking to our community partners and taking their advice on ways that we can make this more inclusive and accessible to all residents of Washington County, from everywhere from folks experiencing homelessness to low-income residents to moderate-income folks. And our next meeting is gonna be on November 9th. So now while the housing crisis is something that I imagine that this board um, talks about a great deal and puts focus on, I'm sure you have a lot of other local issues that you have to deal with um, every time you meet here. Um, I'm not asking for you, Chairman Lawrence, or for the rest of the board to come to our meetings or for funding or anything like that, but just for your help to spread the word to your constituents, since they're the ones that are gonna best know how funding from the state house and other policies will do the most work for their community, for this community of Berlin. Um, so I'm going to be here um, for the remainder of their meetings, so you can continue on with your work. Um, if you'd like to talk to me more about this, and I have some promotional materials too about our meeting. Um, but it will be so incredibly valuable for our coalition if you could help spread the word to your constituents and community leaders who might be interested and who this might benefit. So I really appreciate your time, and I'd be happy to take any questions now or to stick around until the end of the meeting to talk with you all if you guys want to continue with the rest of your business. Anybody have any questions? Of course I do. Um, <laughs> can I just ask how you um, publicize the meetings? So it's been mainly social media and flyers and by word of mouth. So we already did a presentation for Barry City at their city council, and we're looking to talk to more city councils and reach out to more community organizations. And as well as um, right now, I'm looking to attend the Montpelier and Barry Homelessness Task Forces to talk to those folks. But we really want, we're trying to find innovative ways to reach out to the community, because like I said before, it's not just low income folks and homeless folks, right. but it's all Vermonters really, just because the housing stock is so limited and it's just hard to find somewhere to move into, even if you can't afford it. Right. Where will your next meeting be held? So we're gonna be at the Trinity Methodist Church again in Montpelier, over on Main Street. I uh, also have like a little flyer of a QR code that folks can scan to. I can hand that out at the end of the meeting too. Very good. <laughs> Thank you for your presentation. Thank you for your time. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Right. Uh, ARPA fund usage discussion. Just the ongoing one, right? Right. So, how much of the money do we have now? <laughs> I can go look it up. Uh, I, we've, got, we've got the first two. We've got the, it yeah, we get the first payment, like one hundred and thirty-five thousand from the state, and then we get a payment from the fed, from the county. Oh my God, I can't remember if that was like. It's, it's, one that, it's, it's the okay, one that's two hundred. I think thirty-five, yeah, I thirty-six. Think it's right that. In the end, we're gonna get roughly double, the, double, double the one hundred and thirty-five and double the other. A little over eight hundred thousand. These are half payments that we're receiving right now. Right. Where is the money sitting? Yeah, right now, I have some of it in what we call the sub-accounts, and um, then I have part of it in the general fund. However, I have a whole separate fund set up for it. And I'm probably going to move it into just one big checking account and have it be interest-bearing. Okay. Because okay, I have to make sure the money's safe. <laughs> and that's what I was just talking to Vince about that this morning. Having it in sub-accounts, I want to make sure that we have enough coverage, so I may be moving it into a separate account. I'm more interested in the interest piece of it. I was just going to ask the same. Well, right. the rules, we're allowed that's to good. collect interest on it. We Correct. Are, I yes. do believe that we can, and that's why I initially put the 125000 in the sub-accounts. That's interest-bearing, and that's the most interest-bearing that I have right now. If I can move the other money into that without having the bank get a bond, an extra bond, then I will move it into sub-accounts, but I need to talk to the bank before I do that. However, if I do end up putting in a checking account, it will be interest bearing. But like the sub accounts are are just just better amount of interest. Not huge, but it still is at least interest bearing. Thank you, Diane. Uh, have another discussion. Well, I, I was going to say based on that, based on the fact that we we do have a couple of years here, right, to to spend this money. Correct. So. Based on the fact that we can collect interest as well, it might be worth um, doing an RFP for the uh, digit digitization of records. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, if that's something, I think I think at one point or another, everyone's kind of talked about that one. So it'd be good to firm up the number, and then 
you know, Richardson Road has been talked about since before I was here. That's one of those ones that, you know, every year we're like, can we do it? Can we not? Let's put it off. And at some point, it's going to fail, right? You're talking and the culvert, right? The culvert. We've had some of the engineering work done. We just, I don't know what happened after that, but right. we've had a little bit done. Yeah, I just, have, I just don't know if it's $100,000 or a $1 million, right? I was just going to say the same. We don't even have an estimated cost right. attached to it. If yet. we had an estimated cost, it might. It, it may be helpful to drive some of this discussion, and I think we have the time. Given, given the time frame, too, we have found some other resources potentially for the engineering piece, but just talking, it might be a good time to see how that would work, too. Yep. I can get okay. together with things with what I have already. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Well, I'll look at getting some RFPs for some of these unknowns mm -hmm. to get a ballpark price. Because, mm -hmm. um, again, we've got at least two years before we have to obligate the funds. Right. You know, just it's two years of interest that we can gain on a fair amount of dollars. So. Sounds good. Those are just the Those are ones that I have specific interest in. We already did the Poly Norfolk, right? What's that? We already committed with Poly yeah, Norfolk. Yeah, that, yeah. that mm -hmm. but not, not using ARPA funds, right? No, maybe. No. I thought we could retro, maybe. Or something. It, it's it's well, still an know, option if you decide could, to. But it's just a small yeah. amount. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. You know, and it's an operational cost that's going to keep going year after year. So. Yep. Year, so. Like the implementation cost for the digitization, that that That's would be big, like something that would be transformational, you know, right on how we do business. So that's something we should consider. The operational <laughs> cost after it's implemented, that should be operationalized and analyzed after that. But yeah. sure. anything else? Thank you both. Uh, Dodge Farm Homeowners Association request to take for the town to take ownership of the road. Mm -hmm. I'm Roberta Haskin, I'm one of the homeowners. And nice to meet you, Vince. You as well. This conversation started months ago, it might even be a year oh, ago. And there are now nine homes. Some are uh, under construction, one is about to start, and several are occupied. So we as a homeowners group um, are requesting the town to take over the road. It's now private and make it a town road. Uh, when we started the conversation, it was to get some preliminary information. We were told we needed to have an engineer's report and a cert certification to make sure the town uh, the road met the town specifications, so we did hire an engineer. We had a great time finding someone because everyone's busy, but we finally did uh, find Mr. Bernie Chenette, who is a Berlin resident, and willing would help us out. So I submitted the report two weeks ago to uh, Vince, and hopefully you got a copy of it. It appears that he did agree that the town, uh, the road meets the town specifications. Although I'm not any expert on this, but it seems like we might have to do some work before uh, it could be taken over. And as you know, it also is the road to the town water system. So there was an informal, I don't know if it was an agreement, but the town has been plowing the road for several years now to get to the water system. So it kind of makes sense for this to happen. So we submitted the information and waiting to hear your response. So from my perspective, one of the things that I need to do, again, I'm the, I'm the new kid on the block, right? I know we've done things like this in the past. I just don't know the process. I want to look at what we did, for example, at Partridge Farm, right? We went through a process there to accept that road. It was built to town standards. It was paid. I'm sure we've got it somewhere. I just need to do a little bit of research to see what was done there. And then I'll, I'll present whatever that is whatever that process was to the board as well to help help make that decision. I can help you with that, Vince, because it, it happened with my private road. So I know the whole process. Okay. I think I was on the board when Yes, you were. Because, <laughs> we, again, we should, if we have a process, it should be a standard process. It should be a standardized process. Mm -hmm. and apply equally across the board. So I'll, I'll try to have that before the next meeting if I can. Pull that together. I concur. Thank you. Okay. Did you have any input on it, Tim? Yeah, like, so me and Vince have talked 
for a bit in the last two weeks about this with this upcoming thing. And like Roberta said, the town was brought into the association and for the contribution for that, for our right to use the road to access the well field was that the town, instead of paying in cash, would take and plow and sand the road for there. So that's where that comes in. With the town taking it over, it's not the most easiest road to maintain. It's switchbacky. Um, right now, like you said, there is some stuff that needs to be done. The, the shoulders are very high on it. Um, my recommendation to Vince was is that if we can maybe get it paved before the town accepts it, it cuts back on the town's man um, having to maintain it throughout the years ongoing, like as far as grading and graveling. And if we get it paved, we just have to plow it and salt it and maybe clean the ditches every once in a while and then it's very minimum traffic and it isn't heavy traffic you know what i mean it's homeowner traffic that pavement should last for a long time if it's done the other question that's got to be verified and agreed upon as well too my understanding is from, from what i've seen so far the the road was approved at the end at the cul-de-sac there's also additional driveways beyond that cul-de-sac as well so we'd have to make sure we clearly define where we begin and end ownership as well. Yeah, and is, is your up to yours a different, or is it done, is it well field it's, road? Or? Um, from my understanding is, Vince is correct, the, the uh, private road ends, and then there's a right-of-way over lot nine, which is my lot, to the gates of the water system. So I'm not, I'm myself, I'm not clear what happens to that right. little portion. Yeah, because as far as our map show, Calderzac is the end of the, the private road. So that would be part of the discussion is to where and how far are we going to take and accept and Thanks, Roberta. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Vince, would you let me know when you, um, I will. whatever you find out? Yep, I certainly will. For the work needs to be done. Yep. Okay, thank you. I'll see what the process is, and then when I let the board know that, I'll let you know as well, and also when I put it on, the, get it on the agenda. Yep. Thanks. Okay, great. Thank you. Here's, 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 MHQ has a good reputation. Some agencies around here use them. They came up significantly under the original estimate. They also offer uh, a lot of options for us moving forward. Um, they have vehicles in their fleet that are already ready to go, just need to be marked up. Um, obviously, there's a price for that, but it would certainly be better for us not to have to wait seven to eight months to get a car and then another two months to get it upfitted. If we can go down there, basically buy a car, get it already ready to go moving forward, that might work. They also take trade-ins, so that might be a good way for us to offload our fleet that we're getting rid of and turn it in for a little bit of credit on new cars. Definitely a good option if, you know, God forbid one of the vehicles was in an accident or something like that unplanned and we needed to yeah, especially yeah. with everything that's going on with cars these days. Yeah. Yeah. Glad, glad we looked at that resource. Uh, uh, move approval with the uh, uh, quilt for outfitting the police cruiser. And I second the motion and note that it's valid for 30 days from 924, so we are in good stead. Yeah. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion, Thank you. Motion carried. Then uh, we have 
Can I just wanted to make sure the board didn't forget who I was. So oh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you look vaguely familiar. Once in a while. Um, we're moving ahead pretty good. There's a lot of mandates from the state coming down the pike. Um, and I think we're doing a pretty good job of staying on top of it. Um, specifically, there's a state mandated use of force. Um, that's all new. Um, it's never been done before here. Um, and it goes from we had like a five page uh, policy on use of force to about 35 page policy on use of force. So there's a lot of training that goes along with that, a lot of policy rewriting. Um, so I think we're in a pretty good spot. We're ahead of the curve. It went into effect October 1st, and we're right there where we need to be. So how's the state doing with training? Uh, well, it's one of those things, they rolled it out. They <laughs> literally issued it to us on paper September 20th or in that neighborhood, and it was going into effect October 1st. <coughs> no training. Like I said, most PDs went from five pages to 35 pages. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, it, it's not anything we're not doing. It just kind of documents what we really should be doing a lot more thoroughly. But, so this in two parts. Is the state going to offer training? The trait, the state has offered some very basic okay. training just to familiarize people with the changes in the use of force. Um, but this is kind of systemic in that it's going to have to be rolled into our yearly training on physical use of force. Yeah. Um, that, that's where I was going with it. Isn't that through the state? Is it the uh, annual no, training? No, unfortunately, yeah. the, the state has really uh, dialed back on the training that they've offered at the academy. And it's forced us to look to third parties okay. to get that kind of training. Specifically, we're looking at de-escalation training, people working on their verbal skills, um, some tactical distancing, to buy themselves a little time to deal with situations rather than kind of rolling up on things and trying to gain control of like what we have previously trained to do, especially in my generation as we kind of pick up. Um, it really focuses on trying to buy yourself some time and trying to bring in other resources. And the state really hasn't provided a whole lot of training in that area. Then the second piece of that is the, the full-time officer training that the academy offers. I know for a while they weren't doing it, and then it was slow to get going again. Is that picked back up? I know they um, can only offer one class every six or eight still weeks. Still pretty, and they used to offer classes multiple times a year, and now it's more like once a year. Um, and they're really limiting uh, the number of people can be in that class, and there's all sorts of restrictions on the class itself as far as contact with each other and things like that. Um, the new use of force model will be implemented in the full-time academies moving forward. So people should already kind of be familiar with that, how we're supposed to be doing business from now on. Uh, but getting some of the full-timers through the training and making sure we have enough training is going to be a little bit of a challenge in the next few months. How many positions do you currently have open? Um, we have one on workers' comp and we lost one to Montpelier. We're functioning the two down, essentially. A second uh, RFP, Mon Monaghan, Safari, and Duchamp out of Burlington. Uh, fairly competitive. Um, so we just received it on Friday, so I'm sure you'll want some time to probably review that before you make a decision. Their price is, is, is a little bit lower um, than the uh, current firm that we work with. Yep. been working with the exist, existing firm since 1992. So when it comes to the, the history, they know us pretty well. Uh, the one thing that is missing, um, and I will go back and ask them for that, is if you compare the two, um, Zallinger 
the current firm that we work with provides a little bit more detail with their cost breakdown as far as travel and, and such and mileage. Um, there's none of that uh, mentioned as far as travel and mileage goes in the uh, Monaghan quote. So I, I will reach out and ask them for some clarification on that. I did since they're out of Burlington. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I did note under their other costs that they indicated on rare occasions when necessary we charge actual costs for out-of-pocket expenses right. and included in that they referenced mileage. Yep. So they started it out with the on rare occasions. Right. So that's one question I would have is comparing apples to apples in terms of the mileage given that they are in Burlington. What are those costs typically that they charge? Their per hour rate is <coughs> sizably different. But I also understand what you're saying in terms of, you know, the experience and the long-time commitment of the other firm as well. Are we, how is, how is the other firm doing at this moment in time? They're doing pretty well. They've actually, you know, since uh, Mr. Halpert left, they've assigned two to us that are, that are working with us and using him as a reference to get up to speed on things so so far there haven't been any real issues or delays from yeah. that and they've been supporting us pretty well and they've been pretty quick in their responses within a day or two I'm getting answers so, back I know at first we felt like it was maybe but now it's it's satisfied yeah it's picked back up how long do we have this RFP out for uh, it's been out for about three weeks um, total. Uh, the one that was on the um, Vermont, Bar. Vermont Bar Association has been out for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. so we've only got one response from the bar and then from the public notification in the paper and things we got the one response from them. Mm -hmm. And that's that's it. Okay. And the deadline was last Friday for that. So, so you're not expecting anymore. I'm not expecting any more at this point. How do you feel? Um, you know, we want to probably make a decision at the next meeting, take some time to review this. I think that's wise. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Vince, um, before the next meeting, could you could you do some uh, reference checking on the one we're not familiar with? Sure. To see that they listed some references. I do there. believe we have used them before in the past for some uh, personnel issues. They actually mentioned Dana in there, yeah. where they had worked with the town. Event. One of their attorneys had worked with the town in the in the past. Yeah. Uh, so I'll follow oh, up though. Two or three times, anyways. Okay. All good experiences. Yes. Great. Thank you. All right. Uh, municipal planning grant, 20k with 2k match. Discussion with Carla. Thanks for coming in. Tell us all about it, Carla. <laughs> so there's two things I just want to make sure Carla knows, right? We do have an executive session tonight to talk about the other. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, yeah. I'll okay. hold off on that. Um, so basically, the we did apply for the municipal plan for the planning assessment last year. We did not. We were not awarded the, the grant. The grant is really designed just to assess needs. It's not, you know, you don't have to take the recommendations you don't have to follow through on what they say but I think it's a good time to assess the needs and it is important uh, in regard to the Newtown Center in that um, you know one of the requirements is that there's a municipal facility in the town center now that strongly considered as an off as one of the locations was what was what the right but was. but there has to be something there it doesn't have to be the municipal building but there has to be some component there and we we haven't gotten the definitive answer as to whether the town green is acceptable should that be developed town water fountain so <laughs> so i i think but i but the, the, the starting point is just getting the assessment done and finding out what the, the needs are of the municipality and so i mean and there's no guarantee we're going to get it uh you know but i think it's at least we at least should put put forth this project put, put forth the grant and, you know it's all done we did it was it had already been written so it was the easy way to to move forward to try to get the funding um, and it was the priority at the time uh, and it still is I think in terms of what you can get the grants for um, so we just decided to put that forth again um, in the hope that we perhaps get awarded it we may have a little bit 
we may have a higher priority now with the town center piece. You know, it's not technically approved. Um, so, so it's possible how, we'll get it. How is, how will this one is really simple explanation be different than the last time we did or why? But like, I mean, I know it's important, it's, but it's uh, why we didn't get it last time. Well, haven't we done haven't we done some planning similar to what this, this no. would cover? No, this so would what? assess the needs of the municipality in terms of I like, honestly I don't know in in great detail what it does, but it assesses what you need for space um, and and how you're and, and provides. Uh, I don't know if there's options on. I don't know what the consultant will, will whether they'll provide you know recommendations, but it really is just an assessment of what the town needs going and, forward. And so it's not specific to the town. Center. No, it, the, no, the assessment itself is strictly no, for the town's use. Okay. I, I think they look at their growth rate. Yeah. And then they build their plan based on yeah where, it, where it's the not, town is going. Okay. But it but it's helpful. What it needs for infrastructure to support. Exactly. That, but what it's it. what it does for us is show that we are also doing it in regard to I mean it helps the state to say okay they're taking steps to see what they what their needs are and so it, it also works in conjunction with the <coughs> town center application in that regard but it doesn't mean that anything has to happen you know specifically it's not specific to no spe okay well, that's okay. right and, yeah so I think it's it's just a, a nice tool for the town to get some funding to assess the needs the, the needs of the municipality going forward so okay I don't think we, we no. I don't think we understood it that way no necessarily. it was unclear but, on what we were yeah, going to use no. to, you know yeah. what we were planning exactly. it's, it's really for the town's use for the town's knowledge um, and it will also you know aid in that but it's that's not the primary purpose okay okay So do we vote on this now? Yeah, we'll try to approve it. That'd be good. Uh, move to approve the municipal planning grant. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Oh, hey. Hey, Brad. Hey, Brad. Thank Motion you. carried. Thank you, Carla. Thank you, Carla. Thank you. Approval of license permits, vouchers. I make the motion to approve the payroll warrant 22-08 for payroll from September 26, 2021 to October 9, 2021, paid on October 13th of this year in the amount of $47,279.72. Also payroll payable warrant 22-G06 with checks 21498 to 21531 in the amount of $286,075.61. And the September 2021 budget status report, trial balance report, and delinquent tax report. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Oh. Motion carries. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> So we remove the minutes uh, by approval of minutes for the meeting of October 4th, 2021, and we remove the May 27th minutes because that's correct. Well, I thought we were adding the October 4th minutes. Yeah, we yeah. added the October oh, okay. 4th. I'm so, sorry. So we moved to May 27th. We remove no approval added. of the minutes of October 4th, 2021. Second. Any discussion? <laughs> Those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Round table. Well, that didn't start. He really has a couple of things. <laughs> really? Something for consideration that the Public Works Board has, is looking at is the opportunity to invest some of their funds. Uh, in your package, there's a letter that says draft on top. That's the draft request for proposal. Um, so this is just information for you uh, to look at and uh, provide some feedback on whether you uh, think it's a good idea. I know that uh, I'm pretty sure our treasurer would like to say a few words about well, it as well. That, um, any investments by state statute is up to the, uh, is up to the treasurer. However, a few years ago, we had a policy that the treasurer and the select board would be involved in making any of those decisions. Okay, and so the utilities board just put it on itself, drop, get an RFP, and they had somebody else write the RFP. So I guess that I'm not against investing, but I really do want to look. If I'm going to have an RFP, I really want to do it through um, the cities and towns and get the information there and then go from that part, that point on. But once that happens, I'll be discussing it with the select board. So we will not make any investments without you. 
Thank you. Thank you. Well, we appreciate that. Thank you for your recommendation. And I'll just talk to you about it. Thank you very much. So. I don't have, believe it or not, Oh, well, the only other thing for discussion, I do have one more, it's on my notes. <laughs> Retreat dates and, and times when you think it might be good for you to do so. I'm flexible, and if it's this week, the only night that I'm not available this week is Wednesday. Yeah, I don't think we can do it this week because I need to warn it because mm -hmm. there'll be a forum there as I would well. Say the same. Mm -hmm. so, so, earliest could be next week in the evening. Um, again, we can do it here. I can talk to the Comfort Inn, see if we can get their conference room. Um, two to four hours for the first meeting to, to get our heads around it and then mm -hmm. sure. probably one maybe two more meetings after that I'll, uh, are there any nights that don't work and I'll see what we can get at the comfort in if that works for everyone and come up with a proposal Monday and Wednesday next week are not going to be otherwise so pretty great. No, Monday or Wednesday next week okay Tuesday and Thursday are uh, <laughs> so Saturday and Sunday are looking pretty good no. then. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. All right. I'll look. I'll look at Tuesday and Thursday and see what's available. If either of those available um, hours, start at six. Start at seven. Flexible. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'd rather start at six than seven. Honestly. Okay. Start at six. Okay, uh, a good time will be had by all. And, all right, anything else? I'm done for that. Sorry? No, but okay. Well, all set. Thank all you set. so much. Brad? Yeah, I'm all set. Good. I actually have something I know I'm not around to. Oh, okay. However, there's Always. a couple invoices um, that you need to sign off on. One is the chair that has to do with divorce construction for the culvert. Okay, they've turned in their second form, their second billing, and it's been approved by um, Dubois Construction as well as our engineer. And I need to get the chair to sign that and it's in there with a check. If you're not going to approve it, then of course we send it. Uh, and then there's another one for um, the Berlin Fire Department that needs a select board to sign off on it as well, and that's for their August expenses. Okay, I did have one thing schedule for Fisher Road opening yes good glad you asked uh, they've actually improved by about a week they're actually set to set the culvert on the 25th of October now their last schedule that they gave us was November 1st so there's been about a week of improvement there in the schedule so it's looking better than it was good to get it completed okay kudos to them um, the other question I have since you brought it up um, do we want to consider since it, it is Kind of a big deal that's been dragging on for a while having a ribbon cutting. Just throwing it out there. Don't have to decide now. <laughs> I'm not opposed to it. I think it uh, might be very favorable. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at setting something up. I'm sure the chair will want to be there to cut the ribbon. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> uh, I don't have anything for that on the table. Uh, the, the check for new voice, you said that that's that has not that that been worn, it's been through the minutes, it's been through the approval process, right? Yes. The um, contractor signed off on it and the engineer. And then once those two signed off on it, it comes to me and then you sign off on it. And then um, I'll put it. Motion to go into executive session. Discussion. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Motion carries.